Ready? It's time to talk sports. No! National, national, local, local, professional, completely unprofessional, high school and college. Let's take it even further off the hook. It's the Zach Gelb Show. We are rolling on, on Fox, Fox Sports, Sports 920, 920 the, the Jersey. jersey. Five o'clock straight up. Welcome back to the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey, 609-919-9200. Chris Cluey joined us in hour number one. If you miss it, just check it out on the podcast at 920thejersey.com. Are you ready for a new era? Rutgers football under the leadership of Chris Ash starts this Saturday. You can listen to the game right here on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey, with pregame coverage beginning at 1 o'clock with my man, Mark Malusis. And now joining us on the hotline is the head honcho, the AD of Rutgers Athletics, and that is Pat Hobbs, who's kind enough to join us right now on the Zach Gelb Show. AD, thanks for a few minutes, and how are you? Good to be with you, Zach. I'm doing well. We're excited about the start of the season. Everybody's ready to get out to Seattle tomorrow, and uh, we've done everything we can all summer long. Now we're going to see how we play. And you started being the AD at Rutgers. You were appointed at the end of November. So you had some months. You had a nice sample size to get comfortable and be the AD here. What have you learned about yourself so far on the job? I don't have enough time for it. <laughs> no, but there's so much There's so much to do. Um, look, it's exciting. The opportunity is tremendous. Uh, we're in the Big Ten. We're in the toughest division of the Big Ten. Um, but uh, there's a lot that has to get done. And so from the minute that uh, Coach Ash and I uh, got on site, uh, we've been just running hard and trying to do everything we can to make sure that we bring the Rutgers faithful, uh, the team that they want and the competition they want. And, uh, so that's what we're about. And Rutgers needed some new energy. They needed new life uh, in the athletics, and you needed a good leader. And I think they have the right man in yourself here at Rutgers University. Time will tell. Time Um, will tell. (laughs) Right? But do you feel that new energy? Because you have tremendous leaders in place. And I have to say, so far, I hear a lot of positive about Rutgers right now. You know, there's there's a lot of energy and excitement around the place right now. Um, a lot of that has to do with Chris Ash. Um, people uh, see that he was a great hire for us. Uh, he's brought a really different work ethic and intensity. What we're doing is a plan for success here. He has executed on that plan. Uh, and obviously, in the end, we want to we got to get out there and we got to win some games. Um, but uh, everything he's doing right now, the changes in strength and conditioning with Coach Parker that he brought in, what we're doing at the training table for our players, uh, our players are excited. And and sort of we're all feeding off of that. Uh, we got a long way to go. we got a lot to do, um, but, um, but it's an exciting time. And obviously fans want to see you win as many games as possible this year, but how important is that to understand that, hey, Rome wasn't built in one day with the cliche and you have to be patient, and this is really a season that I look at it where Chris Ash lays the foundation and it will only get better from here. No, that's absolutely right. I mean, you, 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 the, look, ex- expectations are always high, and I understand that, and folks have been frustrated. Um, but I, I think they also understand that, uh, you know, Chris was given a task. He can't do that in one year. Uh, he's had great results on the recruiting trail already, and we have to keep continue that all the way into next January and signing day. Um, but that's what it's going to do. You know, we've got some great, great players on our team. The, the way they've responded uh, everybody should be proud of our Rutgers football team. Again, regardless of the results on the field, we want we want to be competitive. Obviously, we want to win. But the way these young people have responded has been tremendous. They've bought into everything that our coaches are doing. Um, and so we've got some real talent, and we've got some strength now, and we'll go out there. But you need, in the Big Ten, to compete, you have to have depth, and depth will require time and bringing in more kids. And kids who have the benefit of our strength and conditioning program over not just one year but two years and three years to see the real results of what we plan to execute on here and the trust factor is so big the kids have to trust the football coach and goes in any sport the kids always have to trust the coach and the coach has to trust their players and you have to build that trust as well leading the athletic department how do you build that trust with these players since there's been a lot of change at Rutgers uh, you got to show them, right? I mean, you can't just say this is what we're going to do. You got to show them what we're going to do, and that's what Coach Ash and, and his staff has done from day one. Uh, Kenny Parker, uh, you know, he talked about the importance of Kenny Parker, and our and our students have seen that. Um, one of the comments that I, I you know, you, it's sort of mixed because you feel bad when you hear it, but I love hearing it. Is the number of our juniors and seniors who've said to me, "I wish I had three, four years under these guys," um, because I'm already seeing just in in nine months the. Difference difference that it made for me in terms of my ability to play this game and to use the skills that I bring to this game. So um, the players, uh, they do trust this staff. 
Um, you, know, you look at what they've done throughout the summer. They've been committed. They've been dedicated to it. Uh, and they've done everything that we've asked them to do. Uh, and so the trust is there. Um, they say, you know, part of it, too, they see where these coaches coach before. They know Coach Ash uh, is a coach on a national championship team, uh, that our coaches have been involved in Big Ten champions and other uh, champions from other conferences. So they know that these guys not just come in and say, hey, this is, this is what you have to do to be successful, but we've done this in other places, and this is the success we've had. So you listen and you uh, execute on this, and you'll see, you'll see success. So the, the buy-in is 100% from our players. I know it's a different conference, and the Big Ten is much bigger than the American Athletic Conference, but I came from that Temple program, and I saw the way Matt Rule came in and implemented his system, and I fell in love with what Matt Rule was doing right away. And when I came so far to cover – uh, Chris Ash's practices I am seeing the improvements and I do like the message he is sending when you first sat down with him and you had that tough task of finding the next person to lead uh, Rutgers football after the departure of one Kyle Flood how did you know Chris Ash was the right guy what impressed you the most about him in the interview well from from the very first question uh, he answered questions in a different way than anybody else. I mean, there's sort of, you know, you can ask some questions out there and you sort of expect the formulaic response, um, or you get this really well-reasoned, thoughtful response um, that you learn in, in terms of uh, you know, the information that they're giving you. And every uh, question I ask Chris about, uh, you know, how are we going to develop the team? How are we going to recruit? How are you going to put a staff together? Um, it was as if he'd been planning on that interview for years and years. And frankly, I think that is the way he approached it is you know many years ago he decided um, I'm going to be a head coach and I want to be the best head coach I can be and um, that is he has an intensity about him he has a focus about him um, so that uh, he came to that interview that conversation with his plan in place uh, and then you know obviously everything he said resonated with me and we ended up where we are and you know this comes down to recruiting you need to get the right players in here and you need to get players that excel not only on the field but also in the classroom and also fit that competitive nature of the Big Ten. Let's say if a kid in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York may be listening right now or approaches you and say, hey, Pat, why should I come join the movement at Rutgers University? What do you say to a recruit? I tell you, what I say to them is talk to our current players. Our, our players are our best recruiters right now because they are seeing what this staff is bringing and they're seeing uh, what uh, what's happening to them individually uh, in terms of their preparation, in terms of the development as as a young person. And so the best the best recruiters we have right now are our current players, and that's already happening. They're already talking back to their high school coaches and talking back to people at their high school and saying, this is different. This is, a, this is Big Ten championship quality preparation, dedication, and support, uh, whether it's in uh, the strength and conditioning room that we just opened, our new $2 million strength and conditioning room, whether the quality of the training table that we're providing to our student athletes, whether it's the experience through the summer uh, and making sure that um, they're well taken care of uh, throughout everything that we do. Everything is being done first class at a level where we're going to raise the expectations across, uh, uh, raise the expectations for our fans, certainly, but it's going to raise the expectations of the recruits in terms of the quality of the experience that they're going to receive. So uh, talk to our players, come and see, uh, and you'll be very impressed. And you know that the school makes a lot of promises, and when you're trying to get a player here, you say, if you come here, you'll be this type of player. But really, at the end of the day, and I had this conversation with AJ, uh, your offensive line coach, it comes down to the kid just wanting it because uh, when you look at the stars, and everything. I've seen four-star recruits, five-star recruits not pan out. I've seen four, five-star recruits pan out, but I've also seen two-star recruits be one of the better, if not the best player in college football. How do you know if that kid just wants it when you're recruiting? You know, I think I think those are the individual coaches. I think AJ is a good example of somebody who who meets and, and can sit down with a young man and listen to that young man and, and sort of you know, hear from him. You know, is that intensity there? Is that desire there? Uh, because if you're committed, we're going to make you a great player. And um, and not and you're right. I mean, there are five star. We we all know the sort of names of five stars and four stars that didn't pan out. And the walk on who is starting as a junior uh, and goes on to play in the NFL. Um, it's hard sometimes to identify those kids, um, but, uh, but you do the best you can and uh, uh, through the process. Uh, and those the kids, 
they, they identify themselves. They, they come pretty quickly, and you can sort of look in their eye and say, is this somebody who has desire and guts? And I'll tell you, the, the best is the high school coaches. High school coaches are great at telling you this is, this is a kid who may not be on everybody's radar, but look at what this kid has done for me. Look at how this kid has developed over their four years of high school, and let's see what they can do now over their four years of college, five years of college. I know you haven't been able to experience this yet for football as an athletic director at Rutgers. How nervous will you be Saturday? And let's say when you have Howard coming in the following week when you're an AD, how will you watch game day? Will you be in the luxury box? Will you be interacting in the stands? What kind of AD will Pat Hobbs be on game day? On game day for an athletic director should start very, very early in the morning and end up very late at night. Um, the game is obviously very important, but that's what I hire Coach Ash and, and his team to do, Is and, and so I have complete confidence in them. They don't need my help uh, with anything going on in the field. Um, so I'll be looking at everything, whether it's on an away trip, how are we doing, how are we getting our team to the site, uh, what are we doing for our fans at the site, on, on the away site. Um, I will be observing and trying to learn every aspect of it and say, oh, He's asking the question, how can we do this better? How can we do this better? Uh, what I preach to our staff here, what I preach to everyone is, every day we should be asking ourselves, how do we make Rutgers better? And so if that's sort of our travel experience for our team or our travel experience for our fans, or it's the home site and what we're doing on our home site, uh, you want to be uh, out there engaging um, the Scarlet Nation and, and you know, they're enthusiastic, they're really excited about this. I'll look at everything. Uh, and that's, that's, that's the job you have uh, and it's exciting. I'm I'm excited about it. I'll, I'll love looking at the game and seeing what our kids are doing after a lot of hard work. Uh, but I have to watch everything because we have to be about improving every day. Wrapping up with Pat Hobbs, who joins us right now on the Zach Gelb Show, the athletic director of Rutgers University, Rutgers, Washington, this weekend. You can listen to the game right here on Fox Sports 920, the jersey. Uh, let's get to some other sports real quickly. Basketball, uh, the facility. Uh, everyone asks about that, the basketball facility. Just give me an update on what's going on there. Sure. So we're continuing to – we're in the design phase right now. Uh, the, sort of the, You talk to the architects, it's a, it's a whole different vocabulary, how you block and stack different pieces of it. Uh, so the layout uh, for how the facility is going to lay out, uh, where men's basketball, women's basketball, wrestling, gymnastics are going to go, where our strength and conditioning area, all that's done. Uh, we're, we're pretty close uh, to uh, revealing sort of the updated rendering of the facade of the building. I think it's going to be very exciting, uh, and it's going to be very functional building. Obviously, that's what's got to be. Uh, it's got to support our teams uh, in terms of their development and their strength and conditioning and all those other pieces of it. It's a really, really important building uh, in announcing that we intend to compete at every level uh, in every sport uh, in the Big Ten. Uh, and so we're progressing with that, working with the architects. We continue to do our fundraising. We've had some pretty exciting results. Uh, and I think we're going to be able to announce even more exciting results in the weeks ahead. But we know football is the, is the driving force in college sports now and then right behind it is basketball but you know as an athletic director you have to be compliant with title nine uh, the wrestling team's phenomenal and you have a, a lot of other really good teams with some tremendous leaders uh, at Rutgers as an AD how do you ensure that from top to bottom every sport is getting the proper care that it deserves I mean that's part of part that's the task, right? That's the task that you have, and that's something again that you're continually focused on. Um, we're in it. We're right now. We're engaged in a year of strategic planning. We we've never had one for Rutgers, uh, and so we're sitting down. We're looking across all of our facilities, all the support levels that we provide to our 24 programs, making sure we are compliant with Title IX. Uh, it's very important um, that we make sure that we're a leader in that, uh, and so. Um, well, we've made progress uh, on that front. There's more that needs to be done, and we'll be doing that over the course of the year and putting a plan together where we can execute on that for all of our programs because I want all of our coaches to feel well-supported as we move forward. And before we let you run, you know you have tremendous leaders, whether it's C. Vivian Stringer, Chris Ash, Steve Peichel, uh, but you also, athletics, it's its own entity inside of a university. And really with uh, what goes on in college athletics, the education still has to be the first priority, and that sometimes isn't all the cases with some schools and you've seen the way some programs are run and you always have to find the way where athletics falls in the pecking order because hey football is a great promotional tool for a school when you could bring in a college game day or something like that uh where does president barchi stand on the importance of athletics and wh where does it fall in the pecking order of rutgers university in your conversations with him well, I, I, athletics is an important component of, of our university, and it can be a great um, 
uh, great in enhancing sort of the reputation of the university, and that's and not, we've not always done that, right? And so uh, we're going to be about that. But you talk about academics, and academics, um, that's one of our strengths. Uh, if, you, if you look at whether it's our APR, whether it's our GPA, um, this is a university that places great emphasis on academics, and we do that in our athletic program as well. So our student athletes feel very, very supported in their academic endeavors. And a, for the, you know, the vast majority of our students, uh, they're going to play for four and then they're going to work for 40, and you want that to be uh, in an occupation, in a career um, that they enjoy uh, and that they, they uh, are able to access through the benefits of their education. So we will always stay very, very focused. And, of course, you know my background, coming as a law school dean for 16 years, uh, very, very academics focused. So that will remain at the top of our priority list. Well, I'll say this. I just wish you the best of luck, and we hope to see Rutgers back on the rise real soon. And I think you are the right man in place. You have that new energy, and we've talked before, and I sense that energy from you. So I do wish you the best of luck. And in closing, I'll say I think that point spread for the game against Washington is just a joke. It's disrespectful. (laughs) Well, all I'll say is go are you. (laughs) All right. Thanks so much, Pat. We appreciate it. Thanks, Zach. There's Pat Hobbs, the athletic director of Rutgers University, joining us on the Zach Gelb Show. I don't think Rutgers is going to beat Washington. There's a reason why Washington is the 14th best team in the country. But I saw that point spread, and it's right around 26. And those things vacillate every minute. But 26 points? That's a joke. I also saw another spread. Hawaii, 40-point underdogs in Michigan. Now, Hawaii had the unfortunate travel situation where they opened the season in, I want to say it was Australia, maybe, and then they had to fly back and now fly out to Michigan. Oh, boy. (laughs) That's tough travel. But 40-point dogs to Michigan? I think Michigan's on the rise. I think they're going to be very good this year in the Big Ten with Harbaugh. But that's so disrespectful. And I saw the Rutgers line. 26 points, you have a new coach. I don't see a team, yeah, they may lose by two touchdowns. I don't see them losing by 26 points this weekend. And that energy, too. You have to control the emotions. A lot of energy with this Rutgers program, but when the game starts, you need to control those emotions and realize, hey, we're playing football. Got to try to win the game. So with that, also, you have to look at it that Washington hasn't seen any of this Rutgers team so far because Chris Ash hasn't coached in a regular season game with this team. And you have a new offense with Drew Merringer leading the way. And I like Drew coming over from Houston with Tom Herman. That team had a sensational year last year. I think Rutgers is moving in the right direction. And people need to understand patience. They're not going 10 wins this year. It's not going to come right away. Coach has to lay the foundation this year and then get his players, improve recruiting. Rutgers shouldn't lose recruiting battles in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, when you have the Big Ten attached to it. Got to improve in recruiting. I like AJ and the job that he does recruiting. Also like Chris Ash, and we've had him on before talking about recruiting. And they list out why you should come to Rutgers. You just heard it from The AD, Pat Hobbs, a few moments ago. This year, I don't judge it off wins and losses. Very rarely do I say that. But you got to be patient. you got to give Chris Ash three years. You want to see improvements over those three years. And by year number three, you say, okay, let's go. But the first year, I'm not judging it off wins and losses. I'm judging it by how many games this team is competitive in. That's what I judge it off of. And if they're competitive in at least half the games... You take that as a success. That's what you got to do. But so far this year with this team, I know expectations aren't high, but be patient. You got to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports, 920, the Jersey. We're long overdue for a break. Time right now in the Princeton Orthopedic Associates Studios, 518. What we'll do when we'll get back, we had a audible. We had to go to some Spider 2Y banana. As uh, Pat was supposed to join us at 5.20 today, and he called in a little bit earlier, which is fine. So we just had Pat Hobbs on at the top of the hour. So when we get back, what we'll do is we got to talk about the Wells Fargo Center. It turned 20 years old today. So we'll relive all the great Flyers moments, the bad Flyers moments, 
talk a little Allen Iverson, the answer Sixers, and a lot of good college games were played in the Wells Fargo Center. Actually, one that I was broadcasting for that was an upset, and there was a sense of euphoria in the Wells Fargo Center. I almost said pandemonium, because when you talk Rutgers, you have to think pandemonium in Piscataway. The great Chris Carlin call, circa 2006. Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports, 920 The Jersey. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial.